Hey everyone, we've gotten a couple questions in the forums about going from different CAD programs to cutting things out on Maslow. Uh, Hannah did a great video on going how to go from drawing something in SketchUp to cutting it out. Uh, community member Rancher did an excellent one for AutoCAD Fusion 360, and both of those videos are linked below this one. Um, Onshape has become my CAD program of choice, and this video is going to cover the steps I've been using to go from uh, a CAD model in Onshape to a cut part. Uh, the system isn't really the simplest, but it's been serving me well. Um, discussions in the forums have told me that maybe there's a simpler uh, way to do this using a plugin for Onshape called Kirimoto. Um, I haven't really tested that yet, so uh, when I have a chance, I'll go through that process, learn it, and make an updated video if it seems simpler. I like Onshape because it lets me design each part individually and then assemble them into the final object to test how they'll fit together, uh, then export a 2D drawing of all the parts at once to cut them. Uh, for this example, I've kept it simple. We just have a circle and a square to make them easy to tell apart. Um, so these features might not seem very powerful, but when you're building something like the tiny house we were building where you have hundreds of parts that need to fit together, uh, being able to make a change to one of them and then see how it's going to affect all the others, and then export the updated version of all the parts at once is incredibly important. Uh, so here I've got a circle and a square, and you can see how they uh, they fit together. So let's say I look at this, and I'm like, oh, I wanted these to be the same size. I can go into one of them, adjust the size, and this part will update but this assembly will update as well. So now we can see, okay, that looks right. These are the same size. Now, if we're ready to cut them, what we need to do is export a 2D drawing of all the parts. So we're gonna do that by creating a new drawing here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a custom template because I wanna turn off these borders. It'll give you these nice engineering drawing borders, but uh, we don't need those because we're, we're just gonna cut the parts out. Um, you can change the units. Um, I'm going to change the size to D because we want a bigger sheet. Uh, a would just be a regular sheet of paper. And click OK. So now what we have here is a, uh, is a 2D drawing file. Uh, think of it as like blueprints. Normally people would use this aspect of the program to create blueprints. Um, and we're going to insert our circle. And we want the uh, top view of that. We'll put that there. And let's also put in our square. So now we have both of our parts in here. And there's a couple of things we want to make sure we do before we export. Um, the first one is if we click on sheet properties, we want to make sure this is scaled one to one. Um, and that's because if it's not, all of our parts will come out half size. Uh, so we'll click OK there. And now you can see our parts, even on a D size sheet, are really taking up the majority of the sheet. And these are, you know, these are only 10 inches. Um, so if you're trying to cut really big things, you can quickly run out of space. We can give ourselves more space by going in here and changing this to custom, and giving ourselves, say, 100 inches by 100 inches, or however big we want our, our blueprints to be. Um, so now you can see we've got plenty of real estate. Uh, now that we've got both of our parts, oh, and if, if either of these parts is updated here, we can just click this refresh button to bring all of the parts on this on this page up to the most recent version. Once all of our parts are on the sheet, we can export it by right-clicking on it here and saying export. Now, I use this older uh, R13 EXF version. Um, you can see there's, there's, an, there's a later one called 14. Um, 13 seems to work better with most programs. And all we do is click export, and that file will uh, will automatically download. Now, we have a little bit of an issue, which is that I want to use a MakerCam to generate my CAM, uh, or my G-code file, 
but right now we have a DXF file. So I'm just going to convert that DXF file to an SVG file using Inkscape. So all I'm going to do to do this conversion is to open the file uh, by clicking open here, click on the file we exported and click open. And then the one thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to have this be a uh, method of scaling read from file. Um, basically this, this is going to be, do we want it to read the units from the file? And if you, uh, in, in my experience, if you're doing something in inches, you want to use read from file. If you're doing something in millimeters, you want to use manual scale. Um, basically manual scale just doesn't apply any scaling at all. Uh, Basically, if your parts come out either 25 times too large or too small, you just want to use the other option right here. Uh, so we'll click OK. And for some reason, the window minimizes every time. And now we can see we have our parts. Um, sometimes it's nice to check just to make sure things are the right size at this point. So we can change this units up here to inches and just check to see if this is what we expect it to be. Uh, and we know this is a 10 inch square, and that's you know, 10 inches. Uh, so things are looking good. Uh, now all we have to do at this point is say, oh, one more thing. Sometimes if your parts are very, very large, um, they may not show up here. You can see if we keep zooming out, uh, the parts will eventually disappear. Um, so if you, if you get to this point and don't see anything at all, it probably means that to zoom out enough to see your parts, you have to zoom out so much that they disappear. Uh, you can always click and drag, and then it'll at least tell you there's something there. Um, it's a little bit frustrating. So now we need to save this file. Uh, so we're going to so file, save as, and we'll just save it back on the desktop as a, uh, for this time it'll be an SVG file. And now we're done with Inkscape. Here in MakerCam, uh, we need to adjust one setting before we can open our file. So to do that, we're going to click Edit, and then Edit Preferences. And we need to change this SVG import default resolution to 96. Uh, and basically, that's, um, that has to do with the way Inkscape has saved the file. Um, why exactly we have to do that? There's a, uh, a discussion about that in the forums, um, but we have to. Uh, now we should be ready to set up our cut just like we would um, normally. So we'll open our file. There are our parts. Um, I'm a little, a little closer to the origin here. Um, we'll just cut each of these out. Let's say we're using half inch plywood. It's nice to name these. Um, okay, on the outside, uh, this will just make it go a little bit faster. We can be a little more aggressive than that, and we should be good to go. Um, and let's add tabs to these as well. So you can see now there's um, there's a green line showing that we're going to cut around the outside each of these parts. Um, so let's add some tabs to that. And let's add a tab every 10 inches. And we need our tabs to be at least half an inch wide because we are using a quarter inch bit. Um, so we can just, I try to move these away from the corners. Um, it just makes them easier to cut later. Great. Uh, so now we can export our G code. So to do that, we just click export G code, um, make sure all of our paths are going to be exported. And then we'll just save it again on the desktop. Once we've generated our, uh, our G-code file, all we have to do is open it in ground control. So we'll just go here. Saved on the desktop, which isn't where I normally, normally save things. And there's our file. Um, and that's all, that's all there is to it. We just have to click, uh, click run. Um, I know this process seems like a lot of steps, and it is a lot of steps. Um, 
This is a process I came up with while we were working on the tiny house. And we had a very limited um, time to get that project done. And so sort of as soon as I found a system that worked, I stuck with it uh, and it worked reliably. And it works really well if you have a big project with many, many parts and you absolutely have to know that all the parts are up to date and the current version. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily the simplest or quickest way to do that, um, but it does work well. Um, and as always, if, if you guys have feedback or better ways to do this or tips um, or anything I missed, uh, please let us know in the forums because um, any feedback is really what, what guides us as always. Uh, have a great week, everyone.